Robert Diggins takes a look at Mysterious Essex. <laughs> Throughout recorded history, every culture and civilization has sought to preserve its tradition and heritage through the use of myths, legends, and fairy stories. Stories of heroes and heroines battling against the forces of nature are part of every culture. Today it's Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker, while in past times it was St. George and the Dragon, Robin Hood, and King Arthur and his Knights of the Round Table. Essex has a long history of folklore, probably brought here from Scandinavia and Rome. The Celts worshipped various gods and goddesses, performed fertility rites, and believed strongly in the forces of nature. Today, many of the older churches in Essex still bear evidence of our pagan past, like here in the picturesque village of Beecham Roding near Harlow, where we find this classic marked stone. These kinds of stones were sited on hilltops to mark a sacred site. It was from these sacred places that our pagan ancestors would have worshipped their various gods. These kinds of artefacts can be found scattered throughout the Essex countryside, from Saffron Walden in the north to Tilbury in the south. Legends of dragons, devils and witches send shivers up our spine, yet Essex has its fair share of strange legends and superstitions. <laughs> Why is it, for example, that every year at Easter time, men dress in funny costumes, dance, stamp their feet on the ground and knock sticks together? Is our modern Morris dancing a remnant of those early pagan fertility rituals? And what are the devil's claw marks on the north doors of Runwell and Danbury churches? And why on every Good Friday, in the small village of Horndon on the Hill, is a hot cross bun ceremoniously attached to a beam in the Bell Inn. And who is it that every year at Halloween places a posy of wild flowers on the unmarked grave of a local witch in a North Essex village? What's the origin behind these legends? Many Essex churches stand today on the site of old pagan temples, and evidence of those early gods and goddesses form part of their architecture. Our ancestors believed in a god of the woodlands, who they thought protected the earth against famine and drought. A fertility god, known today as the Green Man. Could this be the origin of our legendary Robin Hood figure, who lived in the forest with his cohort Maid Marian? Carol Young, astrologer and psychic researcher, has made an extensive study of the Green Man legend. He's very much associated with energies and you know mythical figures and li like like Robin Hood and, and Robin Hood you know was associated with Maid Marian. You always think of the two together, don't you? Um, and a lot of pubs have been called the Green Man. Um, it's also associated with um, Cananus, you know, Lord, Lord of the, the Underworld, and some people would relate him to Hearn the Hunter. And very much associated with those old green male type energies. But he's very protective. He's, he's a very fertile male figure, king of the forest, consort to the goddess aspect of nature. And those two work well together, which is, I think, a message for us all. There is a, a hidden message there for us all, that you need those balance of energies. And when they work well, they're not at one another's throats, 
but they, they, come, they bring about the renewal of life and nature in the spring. One of the most magnificent and unusual carvings of the Green Man figure can be found in the Bell Tower at All Saints Church in the village of Stock near Chelmsford. The official guidebook seems to diffuse the idea of a pagan god of fertility or a Jack in the Green figure for a rather more Christian concept of the hostility existing between man and the leaves of the sinister forest, which can lead to death and damnation. Other places in Essex where carvings of the Green Man may be found are on the churches dedicated to St Nicholas at South Ockenden, St Mary and St Edward at West Hanningfield, St Marguerite at Margaretting, and the church dedicated to St John the Baptist at Mucking. This last church is now privately owned and visitors are restricted from viewing the carving during its reconstruction. As Carol Young explains, two very interesting carvings can be found on a pillar inside the church. They were recently discovered by Ian Dawson, a local Essex researcher. There's, there's um, the goddess carving in a church at Mucking. The church is now privately owned, but inside, on a pillar inside, is a moon goddess carving. And on the other side of the pillar is a green man carving. When people go to look at these ancient sites, whether they're just looking or whether they meditate there or research them, I think it brings up questions in their minds as to what actually went on in the old communities. We can't really know exactly what went on and what they did, but we get a feeling about the kind of beliefs that they had and the kind of feelings that it generated within them. And I think it's particularly important that a lot of people are recognising that women and the female principle was part of life and also part of what they considered was sacred.